Um, you know, the theme for us as we start summer session two here has been onward and upward. Fresh start. Uh, I like the mindset of our guys right now. This is, you know, I, I just, you can just feel it when you're around them. They're very galvanized, they're very focused. Uh, work ethic's been great. Uh, this has been our first week. We had a lot of guys in between the end of spring and summer uh, work out here uh, on their own by choice, voluntarily. I thought Fletch did a great job with them. Guys were in the gym. Uh, I think we've got a really hungry, as I said, galvanized uh, group right now. Uh, during this summer session, they'll be you know, partaking in skill instruction, some of it in groups, some of it uh, you know, one-man stuff, two-man stuff. We've got a little bit of variety going on here the first two to four weeks. Um, a lot of it due to just making sure the guys that are coming back that have, that have been injured, uh, they're healthier, but I don't want to you know, make sure we're doing the right things and we're taking steps. And you hear me say all the time, to get to second grade, you've got to graduate from first. And you know, so we're doing that progressively with each guy, which we'll go through here in a second, because uh, I know you'll be interested in that. Uh, weightlifting, obviously they're all taking, you know, two classes. They've got, you know, different things they're doing there academically. We came off of another semester with above a 3.0. It's five terms in a row, including summer school, and guys are doing a great job there, so I'm really proud of them. Uh, but we're excited to work with them here during these uh, eight weeks. Uh, we're, we got kind of, in my mind anyway, a five-month plan. It's roughly five months before we have opening night uh, in November. I know that seems nearly impossible, but it's reality. And we want to make sure that we work that five month plan in a very detailed fashion with a lot of purpose uh, as we move forward. So that part's exciting. In terms of the guys, you know, we'll start with Tracy. Uh, Tracy's doing really well. Um, you know, everything from a health perspective physically is, is ahead of schedule. You know, he feels great, he's strong, his body fat's uh, 7%, it's the lowest it's ever been. His conditioning is, is uh, I don't know if it's, you know, November game shape yet, but it's a lot getting closer. He's worked really hard at it. Uh, he feels great. You know, we're just being with him a little bit conservative right now. He's been able to do one-man group workouts. He was in a group workout on Monday and looked great. Uh, today he worked out in here and he looked really explosive on term in terms of lift off the floor. And I think he's starting to get even more and more confidence uh, in his body. So we're probably, you know, I would guess maybe and we'll play it by ear and can certainly keep you updated, but probably two to four weeks away before we kind of cut him loose, cut him loose. So there's a progression there. Uh, Thorne came back uh, to campus over the weekend, uh, obviously after getting the news of his, of his waiver, which we were all excited about. So he's back, uh, knee looks good, um, really good, structurally great. Strength between the two knees is very similar, which is what you want so that you don't overcompensate. Uh, we do want to get him in a little bit better cardio condition, drop just a few pounds to take some of that stress off the lower body. He's already, as you know, huge. And we want to make sure with a lower body extremity injury that he's coming off of that we don't put any excess weight on that right now. So he's, uh, he's probably a week to two weeks away from full go. We're going to assess and monitor him, try to get the weight at a certain number, uh, make sure you know we continue to get his lower body uh, where it needs to be as well. We're doing different treatment and rehab things with both him and Tracy that'll be a part of what they do, quite honestly, probably the entire year. Not anything out of the norm when you come back from what they've came back from. So he's doing really well. Um, Laron is doing well. Uh, he's full go right now, full go on, on everything, and um, which is great. Um, you know, first time he got cleared full go here over the weekend. That's the first time since the knee injury that he's been full go. Uh, strength is great. Um, you know, you experience a little bit of soreness every once in a while. Uh, you know, after some workouts, nothing out of the norm uh, that's not expected from going through what he went through. Nothing that's going to slow him down. He feels good. His body looks great. When you guys get a chance to see him or start getting to the guys next week, you'll see his body, his upper body, his lower body. He's trimmed down. He's really starting to pay more attention to his diet, and I think that's really impacted him uh, big time. So he looks great, he's full go. Uh, Tijon uh, moved in this past weekend. We all know he had the surgery uh, with the foot where they uh, you know, put screws in there. Uh, he's been out of the boot for roughly a month or so. So we've kind of, we've slowed him down a little bit here this first week or two. He is cleared to do skill instruction. He's getting shots up and 
and the free throws and ball handling, but we won't clear him for contact until we make sure that the that the leg uh, is, is as strong, the right leg is as strong as the left leg is what we want. We want them both equal. It's not quite there right now. And uh, before we cut him loose with contact, we want to make sure that we've got that equalized. And then conditioning, you know, when you're, you're in the boot and you come back and you've been out of it for three or four weeks and you're not doing a whole lot of basketball conditioning, that's different than being on an elliptical or ubi or some of the things that we've had him do and will have him do here uh, since he's on campus. So, you know, I expect him probably within the next, you know, I don't know, month or so probably that he could be full go as well. We're getting closer on, you know, really all those guys. Um, you know, J. Cole off, coming off of what he came off of last year, we've tried to be really sensitive to that, you know, with the stress fracture and make sure that we monitor that uh, also. So he's in and out of some things right now in the summer. Um, you know, we're trying to be smart with that as well and conservative with our approach there. Um, you know, obviously in hopes that once we get towards the end of the summer and the fall, he'll be full go, full go, uh, which will allow us to do more with him. As you guys know, he really didn't practice until November 3rd last year before we played. And so that's a much different situation for him and I think really bodes well for us and bodes well for him in terms of you know, being successful moving forward. So that's an update on uh, on the paddy wagon crew. Wait, DB, did I miss anybody? Yeah. I think we got it right. So uh, feel free to ask questions about those guys or the other guys or training or, you know, anything that's on your mind and uh, we'll just roll. How would you summarize the last three months and maybe even a year, John? The good, the bad, the highs? The yeah, sure. Um, you know, for me, and I said this, we're onward and upward. Um, I'm grateful now, you know, you get a chance to sit, uh, take a step back and really think about it, digest all of it. And I'm actually grateful for some, a lot of the things that we went through. You know, I think that it gave guys experience. It gave guys a chance to play roles that maybe we didn't foresee last year due to some of the injuries. We went through a lot of, a lot of tough stuff, but I always tell them, and you guys have heard me say it, I mean, the strongest steel is made in the hottest fire. And I think it's really prepared us for what is coming next very, very well. So we're not gonna apologize for it or, or, or not be grateful for it. I think, you know, we, I think it's made us more galvanized, Fred, I really do. I said that earlier. I think our guys are really motivated. You know, one of our head coaches on campus, I was in an event with him last night. He's, he's come over a little bit while some of the guys were training during the summer session one and now, and he says, man, he said, I, you know, your guys work hard, but I've never seen them like this. And that's, that's true. I mean, I think they're really galvanized right now. So I, I look at it as a good, you know, as a positive thing in terms of what we went through. At times when you're going through it, it's not fun, you know. But now looking back on it, you know, I think we appreciate it more and we understand that it's helped preparing us for what's coming next. Who was the head coach last night? I'm not going to go there. John, how has the loss of Kendrick and that decision affected your program and affected sure. your team? Yeah, sure. Well, obviously it affects the team. It's one of their teammates. You know, uh, as I've said now numerous times, I mean, it was a, obviously a difficult situation. I think we made the right decision, clearly. Um, you know, we looked at each of those situations independently. And, and uh, you know, it, it's tough because we all love Kendrick. He's, he's, he's one of the guy's teammates. Um, you know, we care about him. We want him uh, to succeed, to learn, to grow, to move and move on. And we're going to do everything we can to help him move him forward. But, for us right now, I mean, it's it's onward and upward. You know, we're going to worry about controlling what we can control moving forward. You said the off, you're grateful for some of those instances. Did the off the court issues file into that as well? Oh, sure. Everything, everything you go through, I think, draws you closer together. You know, when you go through, you know, stuff that we went through, I think it's, you know, it's part of life. Um, life's not easy. Ball's not easy. You know, they, they, uh, the great thing about one of the great things about basketball is it teaches you life lessons like crazy. And I think our guys have learned a lot. You know, I certainly have learned a lot as a coach. I think it's made us stronger, tougher, and better. Question, two questions on Kipper. One, uh, any update on his when you think he might be eligible? Yeah, two, great question, Tom. And then two, um, you know, when you get a kid like him as a transfer, you, th you think you know kind of what you're getting. Is it possible you're getting more than what you maybe thought originally? Yeah, well, the waiver part, he is the last guy that's kind of the outlier in terms of I don't have an answer for you at this point yeah. in time. And I, and I get asked often, and I, and I appreciate everyone caring about it, you know, when are you going to get the answer on this guy or that guy? And I, w I like to tell you I know, I don't know. It just comes when it comes. 
um, and we're we're in the process right now of making sure all our ducks are in a row with that, and we hope that you know we can have him for the full year. Um, so we don't know yet on that. In terms of what he's done, you know, he was around here for for summer session one. He's now started summer session two. I mean, his his body looks great. Um, I, you know, I would say clearly at this point he's exceeded my expectations and our staff's expectations at, at, at this point. Now, obviously, he hasn't played a game yet. Um, it, it, it is difficult when you transition in mid-semester, you know, and you're the only guy, and the team's this far along, and you're trying to play catch up, and you know. But I really admired the way he handled that. He had a great attitude. And I, one of the things I will tell you is he has the respect of his teammates because of how hard he works. He is one of those guys that goes above and beyond. He's in here constantly. You know, he reminds me of, of Hill in, in that way. What have you seen? I know he's limited, but from Tijan so far. Yeah, not a lot, Jeremy. I mean, because he is limited. I mean, obviously today he's, he just graduated from high school, so he went back the last day and a half or so. And so he checked in and we had the meeting. He started classes and then he drove back up to Milwaukee and had his formal high school graduation. He just got back at 7.30 this morning with his dad. And so today's his first skill, limited, you know, with some restrictions, but today's his first skill. So I haven't seen him on court yet. Today's the first day and he's actually going in about 15 minutes. Fudge said this team is going to look different after what he puts him through. Yeah. Are you seeing that already? Without question. Yeah, I mean, they already look different. They look leaner, they stronger. You know, Malcolm squatted 440s, which is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, he went up four and a half inches in his vertical in 10 months. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, the guys' bodies look different. I think they're more, they're more confident in some of those areas. Uh, we're leaner, body fats are better, we're stronger, and uh, they're really working in there, and Fletch does a great job with them. So the start of this summer session, we've got everybody here. Is there maybe a sense of normalcy? Because we know nothing about the last season that was typical. Um, you know, great question, Scott. I haven't talked about that. They came in on Sunday, and we, we, we I shouldn't say that. We did talk about a, a, a little bit in order to learn and move on, because we want to learn from every circumstance we're in. Uh, but at this point, I, those guys right now are locked on onward and upward, working the five-month plan to make sure that we're the best basketball team we can be when we open up. So I, I think so. I think there's a mindset of like, hey, this is a fresh start. Um, but I think a lot of that is they're going to follow our lead uh, as a staff with that. And then, you know, obviously having Tracy back out there on Monday, I mean, his voice is, you know, I, I miss that. And I know the players miss that too. You know, even just having him in with some of the restrictions he has right now for a few more weeks or a month or so, like, you know, you could tell a difference when he's on the court in terms of just communication and and uh, his ability to lead. Coach, you mentioned Malcolm. Spring semester ends, he stays here to work with Fletch in the gym essentially every day. Yeah. What does that say about his motivation and kind of setting a standard as a leader? Yeah, no, he, he, he sets a standard. No, there's no question about it, Derek, in terms of work ethic and, you know, the amount of time he spends in here. I mean... He is an extra guy, and there's a reason why his vertical jump's going up, his squat's going up, his body's leaner, he's more mobile, he's more athletic, he jumps and moves better. He's really worked at it um, you know, really hard. You know, he's a byproduct of how hard he's worked and how focused that he is. Uh, but yeah, he took full advantage of being here uh, during that session and did a great job of, of uh, working with Fletch. And you know, we're, we're excited. Malcolm's really motivated right now. and. Um, you know, I'm anticipating him having a, him and our team have a special year. Does he owe you anything for the backboard? No, <laughs> no, that was. Uh, you know, someone told me the other day his dad could jump like jump like that, so I was giving him a hard time <laughs> about that yesterday. He said I can now I can jump higher than my dad, so I don't know about that. His dad, I guess, was a really good athlete at uh, at that age. But yeah, he's he's doing really well. He's doing well. Doesn't owe us for the backboard. Well, Kendrick obviously changes some things in recruiting. How do you guys approach that? Yeah, we approach it. We got one scholarship right now, and you know we're going to be, uh, you know, you recruit 365 days a year anyway. I mean, you know, and you got to have your antennas up, and we're doing that. But we want to make sure it's the right fit and fits this team and fits our program moving forward. So, you know, we'll, you know, we've been operating like we've had six scholarships in 2017 and could push and. To 18, and we've talked a lot about class balance. So we got a lot of a lot of variables there that are good. It gives us some flexibility, and we'll certainly uh, you know use that scholarship no differently. 
we have some minutes at the two available now. Is that maybe an opportunity for Aaron Jordan you know, to, to grab hold of that? Sure, Scott. I mean, there's opportunities for all those guys, you know, um, that they've got to snatch and earn. Um, you know, whether it's Aaron, you know, all those guys, DJ, you know, uh, Kipper, you know, Malcolm, you know, Tracy and Tijon, you know, you know, Tracy and Tate, Tate and Tijon. I mean, there's opportunity for all those guys. They've got to go earn it. I always tell them, and you've heard me say it, players play players. And, they, and those guys got to earn it. And they got to work, and we need to get better right now this summer, and I'm confident we will. What are you asking from Maverick uh, to do more or better? Uh, or? You know, Mav, a little bit like Malcolm, can lead by example because the light bulbs went off with him, and he had a great – you know, he went down to uh, IMG during the first summer session and really did a great job down there was the feedback that we received, played against great uh, talent and, uh, you know, did more than hold his own. So he's, he's very confident right now because of the way he finished. You know, we, we, we finished strong as a team in Indianapolis. He finished strong. You know, guys got better. Finky got better. DJ got better. J. Cole got better. We have a number of guys that really, really, really improved. Um, and so that bodes well for us moving forward. But yeah, I think more than anything, tough. Just a, the example of how to work, what we expect. Um, you know, Mav has earned everything. You know, he really has, and he's had a great attitude. And I think he took full advantage of the opportunity uh, that presented itself last season, and that's going to make us an even better team this upcoming year. You know, June's an opportunity for team building. You have any specific activities planned or anything like that? Yeah, we're, we're doing. It's interesting. One of our goals this eight weeks is we want to have we want to have fun. Uh, basketball's fun. We're going to have fun. We're doing a lot of different things. You know, we're going to you know, have the guys over tonight for the playoffs. We've Finky's now the director of the fun police, so uh, he's he gives me ideas. Uh, we played bags the one day. I surprised him out here, uh, cornhole. Um, you never know, bowling, ping pong. You know, we're, we're going to we're going to have a good time. We got we got a great group, and I want to make sure that they understand that. Uh, we're going to work really hard in that 94 by 50, but we're, we're also going to have fun. John, you said teams obviously learned a lot in the past year. What have you learned? Make any adjustments? To stay the course. I mean, just to stay the course. Um, you know, continue to believe in what we do and how we do it. To understand there are things that you can control and can't control. You know, you can't control necessarily events that happen. And in some respects, you can't control outcomes, but you can control the response to every situation. And by controlling that response, that helps you have a chance to get the outcome you want even more. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's how I really feel about it. You know, I, I think our guys have been through darn near about everything as a group, especially these older guys that have been here for a while. And I fully expect for us to be mentally tough and physically tough. Uh, and our response to situations to be on point uh, because of everything that, that we've been through. We've had a chance to learn, uh, you know, through that through that fire, and we're grateful for that. Dee's been around uh, on your staff now. What kinds of things are you having? Here yeah, Dee's had uh, he had surgery there with his hip, so he's been he's been out for a while. Um, he's been on campus a little bit when we've had recruits on campus, and he was uh, over yesterday. He and Dolores. Um, so once he gets healthier, he'll be in more. Um, but obviously, you know, especially on campus recruiting, he's been involved in quite a bit since he's, since he's uh, been with us. And we, we really haven't had a chance to sit down as a staff with our new staff heading into 1617. And I've got everything written up in terms of what I want to do and responsibilities and how we're doing it. But we haven't had a chance to do that. We'll do that once he comes back healthy here. He should be back in the next week or so, I think, maybe week to 10 days. And, uh, I gave him a hard time the other day because I said, I thought you were so tough that you'd only have one crutch instead of two. <laughs> and uh, so he came with two the first day. The second time he came back with one, I think, to send me a message. Is that the new strategy this year, injuries to the coaches yeah, instead yeah, of players? Yeah, yeah. No, I think I'm, we're glad he, he's got knocked out now. And uh, it was a hip and uh, hip replacement. So he's, he's, doing, he's doing well. He'll be back soon. This is an obvious question, John, but what does he do? Um, you know, obviously, <laughs> in it, with the, yeah, within his role, I mean, on campus, um, we wanted him to be as involved as as, uh, as as we possibly can have him involved. You know, I think the biggest thing is that he's, you know, he's a guy that uh, was a was a great player. He's a great person. He graduated from here, did very well academically. He played ten years as a professional, NBA, overseas. 
Um, and then at the conclusion of his year, I call uh, his years as a professional, I call it having a contingency plan or life after basketball. You know, he's, he's treated people so well and he's done such a great job academically that he set himself up for a very productive life and a chance to be impactful when his basketball career was over. So all the things we're asking our guys to do to help them get to where they want to go, the places they want to get to is where D's been. You know, so I, I think that part's, that part's invaluable. That and the fact, obviously, he's walked in their shoes on this campus. He has experiences that, that, uh, that can be really helpful to our guys. So certainly mentoring will be a big part. Recruiting will be a big part, um, as, as well as other, you know, areas that he'll be involved w with. You know, one of the things I try to do with, us, with our assistant coaches and our staff and support staff is have them work in a lot of different areas and have working knowledge of every area of our program because not only are we trying to develop our players, I see it as a responsibility as a leader to develop our staff and, and, and teach them about all the different areas of you know, college basketball. And then oftentimes what happens, Brett, is in return then I learn from them. You know, so it becomes a two-way street. So you know, I think that, uh, you know, that that's going to be good for us. I know, T I know Tijon isn't able to do much, but his arrival was highly anticipated. What were the kind of the emotions when his family came down and, and dropped him off and knowing that he's here to stay and move in? Excitement, you know, um, excitement. You know, Marie and his sister Shanta brought him down. Thomas's dad's here today. And, um, you know, they really believe in this place. It's really neat because he's got bright eyes. Uh, you know about the experience that he's getting that he's, that he's just started this week. He's he's really uh, his, his humility. I told his dad today was striking watching him interact with the players at our parent-child camp over the weekend. All those guys worked it. He had just gotten to campus, and you never know sometimes with a young guy. You know what his disp disposition will be like in terms of connecting with uh, guys. Now obviously he's been here before, so he knows all of them fairly well. But they're going to get to know each other even better. But you can tell it was important to him to to get to know everybody, to touch everybody, to, you know, he has a humility about him that's, that's striking. A lot of that probably comes, he does a lot of work with youth up in Milwaukee. He's been wired to do that since he was very young, you know, so he has a very appreciative spirit. He has a humility about him that I, that, and, and, that I really like. Is that all? Okay.